beet chips. These are beets. These beets have been roasted already. Uh, I did put some cuts. Sometimes I peel them. However, I scrubbed these, so I decided not to peel them for my beet chips. Working with beets is quite messy, as you might know, and that's why my beautiful cutting board here and my butcher blocks don't get red because I don't put beets on them. So I'm going to remove these to the side, and I'm going to move to a hotel pan and my mandolin and a rack. We're going to use all of these items here today. So first thing I'm going to do is pull the rack out and cook. Okay, I don't need that right, right yet. I'm going to adjust my mandolin so that I can see down the crinkle cut pattern right here. Just give it a little twist and get that baby, oh, about maybe uh, eighth of an inch right there. Set the legs up like this. And you can see down that mandolin right now. So I'm going to take and do a couple of test slices. I'm starting with the bottom of the beet. Okay, the first couple slices. That's what I got. Looking good. I don't think I want to go uh, much thicker than that. That's going to be really nice when it uh, cooks and dries. So very quickly here. Oh, 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 by the way, I'm using the stainless steel butcher glove so as to not cut myself on this baby. These blades are super sharp. Okay, the last piece, I usually discard this into the compost. It's completely up to you what you want to do with it. Uh, you can see my beet chips here. Wow, these are going to be good. Look at that beautiful color. The glove is really nice when you get down to the bottom of the vegetable and you're uh, worried about cutting yourself. You're not going to cut yourself, and this is the fastest way to cut the beets, especially into a waffle cut. You're not going to be using a knife to do this. You see how little bit I've got here at the very end? That's not even a uh, quarter of an ounce. All the beets are right there in the container. Good to go. And then I'm going to be switching and putting them on this rack. Okay? All right, I've spread them out in my pan as best as I can. <coughs> I'm going to put just the smallest touch of olive oil on these, like maybe one or two drops per beet. That's enough. Sea salt. Yeah, fresh ground sea salt. I like it a little bit finer than that. Okay. Here we go. Some people have commented on my salt mill. Yeah, I love sea salt. And salt, you may or may not know, is one of the most critical seasonings on this planet. Salt is good. Okay, after the salt, we're going to go with a pinch of uh, fresh rosemary. Yeah, this is cut rosemary. If you don't know where to get it, check out your sponsor. We're putting a little bit of this rosemary on here. And beets often uh, are sweet enough by themselves. Sometimes we put a sprinkle of sugar. It's completely up to you. So there we go, there we go, and right there, that is what we're talking about when we say slow food. This is going to uh, slow cook in the oven maybe 300 degrees for an hour to two hours. This is a slow cooking convection oven. That's what the beet chips look like there when they're all done, crispy. Delicious, ready to eat. And here are the, the finished beet chips. Some are a little bit darker, some are a little bit lighter in color. But anyway, they're all nice and crispy, ready to go. And they're beautiful. 
So that's what you're going to get if you follow my instructions. Yeah, beautiful beet chips. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, support your sponsor. Keep cooking and have a great day.